When I was a young boy cutting pictures out of newspapers and magazines to paste them into my scrapbook, I had no idea what I would become. I loved cricket and I was good with the computers. In the year 2006, a friend gave me a job uh, in a local Urdu newspaper in Kashmir. I was not a photographer there. I was a layout designer. My job back then was to make sure that everything ended up exactly where it belonged. Every day I would go in, sit at my desk and watch blank spaces fill up with stories, editorial pieces, advertisements and photographs. Watching that routine daily made me wonder what mattered and photographs did. Photography has been my passion since I was a young boy and as every family has a designated photographer, my family has me. As I grew in years, my scrapbook photographs gave way to those that made real news. It would not be remiss if I say that my photography and I came of age together. The reason we take pictures is because we want to chronicle our lives. Photojournalists do the same. Most of the images that I show you today were taken because I too wanted to capture a slice of life. The first two pictures that I put in front of you today are a callback to my time in Kashmir. What I learned in my early days as a photojournalist was that some photographs are equally difficult to capture as they are to look at. Grief isn't easy for either the photojournalist or their audiences to witness. But it's my job to bring you the image like the one that is on the screen. The next image you see on the screen is of a policeman who died in the line of duty. It's also an image that can almost serve as a test of the viewer's perspective. When I present my pictures to the world, it's not to tell them what I think or feel or want to convey. I do it so that they can think, feel and infer. My photographs can remind you of an institutional failure that claimed innocent lives 21 years ago. It might, however, just be able to make you wish for a day in life that wasn't all digital. That despite claiming countless lives, the fire that left behind a damaged motion picture reel that you can see on the screen, though there was a tragedy, there was also nostalgia. Yes, I remember the gunfire, the loss of human dignity and the deep humiliation that lasted longer than a person's life. I also remember wails of mothers of slain children, the agony of those who were displaced and I know that my pictures aren't a likely solution to any of what is going on. But I had to soldier on and present my image to the world. When I look at this image, I think about finding out what happens when a part of the world shakes more violently than yours. There were hurdles all along, getting there, photographing, commuting, and getting pictures out. Everything was more complex than it usually is. It again made me realize why pictures are necessary and why photojournalists are sought when tragedy strikes. Events like the Nepal quake also make us appreciate the power that lies within an image because they get out before words. And at situations like these, a visual makes a higher impact. When you see the next set of photos, 
you might notice a pattern. These photographs of everyday life are necessary to keep me grounded. I remember the boy who looked for gold amidst rubble and I captured the image because it connects with me, the young boy who waits every day to find what he needs to get by. I remember talking to this girl, which is on the screen. At her doorstep, she was waiting for her parents. I wonder if she still lives there and waits every day. I often think about this man who threw away his entire day's water supply just to be able to save everything he owned but failed, just probably inches away from succeeding. I think about how we watch the homeless roughing it out and it often slips from our mind because we go back to the comfort of our homes and get on with the life. Do we all not feel like this sometime or another? I remember the last image very starkly. I stopped when I saw wisps of white foam floating in the air. But when I looked down, I saw people standing there. They had never seen snow before and they were looking at it as if it were magic. A story conveyed through a photograph exists in the binaries of the presence and absence of light. When I see something worth documenting, I see what is visible. Along with it, I see what I want to see and show. We all do. However, when I carry upon me the responsibility of not just documenting but disseminating the information, filters are a luxury I cannot afford. We photographers don't keep secrets. We show things that otherwise were never meant to be seen. I'm not here because I want to get my story out. I'm here because there are countless people whose contributions made me worthy of being here. I dedicate this moment to all the photojournalists who are out there but are not here. However, if there is something that I can promise is that if you choose to listen, their, their stories will never disappoint you. I speak for them and thank all of you for indulging me and hearing me out. Thank you.